identity. An exciting, but at the same time, terrifying word. What comes to your mind when you think of the word identity? Is it your gender identity or your sexual orientation? Your racial identity? Your ethnic heritage? Maybe if you're 16 years old and older, you have a driver's ID or a driver's license. If you're a student, you have a student ID. This morning when you came to school today, your teacher probably had you write your first and last name on the top right corner of your paper. But who is this person? Who am I? Who are you? It's probably a question that we have all asked ourselves before. And as a kid, I struggled a lot with this question of identity. You know, I think all of us, being human beings, we all struggle with things in our lives. When I was a kid, I struggled with labeling myself as socially awkward, socially anxious, um, I, ha I was physically uncomfortable being in my body. Uh, I struggled with physical tics and everything that I told myself, I wouldn't be able to change this. This is who I am. I can't fix this. But then middle school hit. And I went to a brief period of depression. I was emotionally distanced from my parents and spiritually distanced from God. And I asked myself, is this really who I am? I wasn't loving my family. I felt distant from everybody around me, and I told myself, that's not my fault. It's just me. I can't love others the way I want to. I can't be thoughtful or caring all the time that I want to. I can't get closer to the people around me. And that began to limit my thinking. You see, as we go on through life, we're always searching for meaning. We're searching for truth. We're asking ourselves as teens, who am I? Why am I here in this world? And I'm here to tell you how my life changed when I put my identity and what Jesus Christ says about me. You see, the truth is we live in a broken world full of people who are broken deep inside. And the Bible has a name for this brokenness that exists in our world, this searching for meaning, this wandering away from the path. It's called sin. And you might have heard it before as a cliche religious word, but the truth is sin, sin is, at its most basic definition, rebellion, against God. You see, sin is when you break God's law and go against his will. And we have all sinned because we have all said no to God. We have all chosen to put ourselves on the throne. We have all chosen to make ourselves God instead of the rightful creator. Especially as teens, how many of you guys hate being told what to do? Yeah. I know I do for yeah, sure. sure. I've been uh, walking with me throughout the years, but I still struggle with that. I don't like being told what to do. I want to be in control of my future, but at the same time, I question, right? What is my purpose? What is, if God is real, what is his plan for me? So sin, at its most basic definition, is rebellion against God. And because God is a holy and righteous God who is perfect, sin separates us from this holy and righteous God. Just as the abundance of life on earth cannot exist apart from the sun, the fullness of eternal life can't exist apart from God. Mm -hmm. And everything bad you see in this world, mar divorce, breaking up friendships, breaking up of families, war, famine, these are all symptoms of the same disease. Mm -hmm. And whether you believe it or not, we have all been impacted by sin. Whether other people's sins have hurt us, such as our parents' sins, our friends' sins, or our sins have hurt other people. Sin is at work in all of our lives. It's a tragic reality, but the good news that I'm about to share with you guys is that God has made a cure, and it's the only cure. His name is Jesus. You see, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came down to this world. He was a perfect human being, yet he lived a mortal life. He died a mortal death in your place to pay for your sins, to be judged in your place, to free us from our death sentence and bring us closer to God. As I said before, because we are separated from God and because God is the source of all life, we are destined for a place of eternal death called hell. And so Jesus came to bridge us and bring us back again to our creator, to our God. And God says that when we believe, when we put our faith in Jesus, that he died for us on the cross, he rose again on the third day, we have victory over sin and death in our lives. We have victory. How sweet 
is this victory. You know, John 3, 16 uh, through 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God didn't send his son to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world for him. And John 14, 6 says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, we don't have to, maybe you've grown up at church, and maybe you've heard this all your life. Maybe this is your first time. I, for one, grew up at church. I heard all about Jesus. I was a Sunday school nerd. I went to school. I went to church on Sundays with my families. Did I know God? I knew all God. But was he my savior? Not quite. You see, I believe in the Bible's promise that Jesus hasn't come to this earth not only to give us eternal life, but to give us an abundant life here on earth. For the Bible says in John 10, 10, that Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but that Jesus Christ has come to give life and to give it abundantly, just more than enough. So no matter what the world tells you, no matter how much you begin to entertain thoughts that I'm never going to be enough, I'm not enough, you know, I'll never have enough of this, I'll never have enough of that, the promise of the Bible is that God is more than enough for you. And in God's eyes, you are infinitely more than enough. God wants to have a personal relationship with you. You see, you were handmade by God, designed before the beginning of the world to have a relationship with him, to be known and to be loved by the creator of your soul. So now, that's the good news. Believe it or not, the choice is yours. But first, let me share how God has changed my life. As I said in middle school, I went through a period of depression and anxiety. I began to discover that all of these things I had labeled myself with in the past weren't exactly completing me. So I began to try to figure out the root cause of what was calling me, uh, causing me all of this pain and turmoil. I was stressing out, okay, the root cause of that has to be anxiety. Behind anxiety is restlessness. Behind restlessness is selfishness. Because I was always stressing about my life, what I'm going to do, how I feel. I had no space in my mind, no space in my heart for anybody else, mm -hmm. much, le uh, much less God. And behind selfishness was pride. And I discovered that this pridefulness of my sinful nature was so hard, impossible to break on my own. I knew that God is love. I didn't receive his healing until I surrendered my pride to Jesus. And I did that by first discovering who God really is in his word. You see, the Bible is the word of God. It's where he breathes his spirit through uh, your soul. And through reading the Bible, I discovered who God is. I began to surrender my life fully to Jesus. In order to do that, we have a word called repentance. And maybe you're sitting here and you feel that God is tugging at your heart. Well, maybe you, for one, want to put your faith in Jesus right here during this lunch period. Or maybe you're curious, you have a couple more questions and doubts. You want to talk to a leader. There are Christian called leaders, pastors, uh, and advisors who will love to talk to you. And I would love to talk to you myself. But you know, God transforms lives. When you put your faith in Jesus, God puts his spirit inside of you. He breathes it inside of you. He gives you a new heart of flesh that beats for the living God and knows who God is. God also transforms your mind. You no longer have to think about things that are death to you because the Bible says that the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. You can't have that. And lastly, you can discover your true and renewed purpose through believing in what Jesus has done for you. So if you're still searching for your identity today, and you want to try finding your identity in Christ, I encourage you to pray this prayer with me right now. So would you all, with reverence to your peers, bow your heads and close your eyes, and repeat after me. Dear Lord, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have lived in ignorance and disbelief. 
but I know that you are a God who loves me. I know that you are a God who loves me. And I know that you made me, uh, you, I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Today I choose to trust in the work of Jesus. Today I choose to trust in the work of Jesus. In what he did on the cross. In what he did on the cross. His life, his burial, and resurrection. His life, his burial, and his resurrection. Today I confess my sins. Today I confess my sins. I take your hand, God. I take your hand, God. And allow you to lead me back on the right path. I ask that you reveal my purpose that you designed me for. That you pour out your spirit into me. Radically transform my life. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Praise God. <laughs>